Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production. Recently, someone asked me about exciters and about an exciter module and everything. So I don't know if an exciter module is coming. I requested one in the future. But today I thought I'd show you some things you can do with exciters and how you can change them to sound a little bit different and sometimes more natural. In the future, I'll show you some things that you can do uh, with physical modeling. I'll try to do some more specific examples like I did with the uh, uh, bear and bow. Uh, but... Let's get started with this and maybe show you some things that I would like in a potential exciter module. What I usually use for an exciter is this drum synthesizer 4NN. And some people ask me why. And one of the reasons is, is it has oscillators and noise built in. Many times what I want to use is either a sine sweep. So it's a sine going down from uh, like a high frequency to a low frequency or I just want to use noise, maybe white noise, pink noise, etc. And here you see it just has this and I have a sine wave here and then I can choose the starting frequency and the ending frequency and the time. So I went over this before, so I'll just go over it just very quickly. I usually like to set the length between about 30 and 10 milliseconds. Let me try 15 here. I usually like an exponential curve, so I'll pull this down. The envelope, you can leave it as it is, it usually starts here, but I like to bring it up and I just don't do anything with the band past here. Uh, I have, so this is just the basic setup. I have the resonator here. This is like a normal setup. I, I just turn the feedback up. And if you hear it, it sounds like this. That's what it sounds like. So it's good to actually play around with this yourself so you can hear this sound, so you can be familiar with what it sounds like. To me, this sounds just like, I, I don't know, like a kind of like a generic like hammer or something hitting a string. It's not a sound you actually hear uh, very often in real life. Usually it's not this sharp and direct. And so I think sometimes it sounds a little bit plasticky. So uh, let's t work on getting rid of that. The other option you have is using noise. So just make sure we move this eye down here. And we have noise. You can choose the length, like 100 milliseconds. We have the envelope here and we have the bandpass. So if I just play it like this, that doesn't sound too good. I have, of course, I can move this down, uh, exponen exponential uh, curve. Uh, and I'll move this down around someplace like 15 or 10 or so. And that sounds somewhat similar, so you think, oh, that's kind of better, but still, like, this isn't really what we want. From here, what you can do is you can use a an EQ or something to change the sound, which is really good uh, and very useful, but that still doesn't give you quite the right sound. I'll give you an example. Let's say we go into this sampler here. Now, in here, we have all sorts of different percussion, like snares. If I use a snare, listen to what it sounds like. Let's try something else. Let's try some cymbals now. So you heard, even though every single time I'm playing the same pitch, these sound radically different. And one of the reasons is EQ. So what you can do is uh, put an EQ in here. But when I did this, I noticed like, eh, there's something not quite right. You'll notice that some of these symbols, like these are pretty long. Like, okay, this one goes until like 1,500 milliseconds. Even if you think like, okay, it stops a little bit before that. It's still pretty long, it's over a second. But if, let's say I took white noise and moved this here, so it's a little bit over a second. Here, like that doesn't sound like the symbols, and for a long time I was like, why? I tried EQing it, and you can EQ it so it's almost exactly the same, like I showed in the commuted synthesis video where I actually used a computer to get the uh, EQ profile correct, but it still sounds a bit different, and I was thinking like, what is it? And then I realized what it is. For natural instruments, the high end decays faster than the low end. So what happens is over time, the actual frequency uh, change for these. So you can't just use white noise like this. 
what you need to do is actually use white noise and a filter together. One of the things I like to use for this is either the filter basic or the bandpass. I'm going to use the bandpass today because this is very useful because of the fact that there's oftentimes low end that comes with white noise that you don't really want. It just kind of takes away from your frequency spectrum. So for the high pass, I'm just going to turn the resonance down and turn the frequency down so it's uh, like minus one octave or so below. And that's just going to get rid of some of the excessive low end. Now for the low pass, I'm going to change this to constant. This is what we really want to uh, you know play with. So I don't need uh, one second. Let's try like 500 seconds or so. Now, we're going to turn down the resonance. Let's say around 25, I think, is good. And you can set this at 12 decibels per octave or 24, whatever you want, really. And I'm going to play this and move the frequency up until it starts to sound like basically what I want, but a little bit dull. I want it to be like, ah, this is the dullest sound I would find acceptable. Way too dull. Around here is good. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take one of these attacks, attack modulators. I'll just open it up and I can set it to whatever time. I have this set to 299. That's pretty good, but I can set it like 250, whatever you want. It's already set to exponential, uh, exponentially going down. I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right. I'm not even sure that is. Is that an exponential curve? I don't know. Anyways, let's move this here and we're going to move it up to, let's say like, 10,000 or so. So now what's going to happen is the frequency is going to swoop down. The filter is going to quickly move down. So it'll sound like this. So there you have it. To me, that sounds a lot better. And one of the things you might want to play with is going in here and changing the time. So the longer I have it, if I have it like this, which is almost the exact same length as the noise, that's going to let more of the high end through. But if I change it lower, like let's say 92, So you can set that wherever you want, and one of the greatest things is you can actually change this based upon key tracking. So sometimes you think, I want the lower notes to have a longer time or shorter time, and you can do that with your uh, key scale here. Or you could even do it with something else like the, uh, for example, velocity. So if you hit it hard, maybe I want a longer time, and you hit it softly, a uh, shorter time. And you can do the same thing with the level here. So there's a lot to do when you want to play with this to make this sound different. And I think this can give a much better sound overall. Uh, it almost sounds like it has reverb on it, but as I said before, be careful with the resonance. If I turn this up high, that doesn't sound good. So move it down until it sounds where you want it to sound. Way too much. It's kind of okay. That's pretty good. That's probably too much. So I usually like it around 25 or so, but set that by ear in, you know, however you like it. From there, we can do other things like we can mess with the EQ. So now they have an EQ, which in previous videos we didn't have it, but now we have it and this is great. So we can go in here and find those frequencies we like and bring those out. Now we can do this and by doing this, we can create a bassier sound, more fundamental. Or we can go higher. So before I was thinking, ah, I want to make the sound of a, a koto, like a Japanese koto, and I was wondering how to do it. But I think this method works well for things like that. When you know it's a string sound, but the normal sign sweep isn't really working, or a, uh, let's say, white noise isn't working, and you can go through and you can try a bunch of samples, but finding the right one sometimes takes forever. But with this, I think it got fairly close fairly quickly.
Of course, there's more things we probably can and should do with this. But I think overall, this is an easy way to get closer to the sound you want. And I'll try to make this a two-parter and I'll show you some other things you can do with this. But overall, I would say use this low pass filter sweep along with white noise and there's many more things you can do. And if I make it longer, it sounds more like reverb uh, if I extend the noise length like this. You know, I make it shorter, it's not quite as good. That sounds more like the uh, sine sweep. So play around with that and try that when you're making your instruments. And remember, you can always blend this with the oscillator too. So you can choose the amount of sine sweep or noise and you can come up with anything that's uh, in your imagination, hopefully. Hopefully you found this interesting and useful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. Subscribe if you haven't done that and check out all the other plugins at melderproduction.com. Till next time, see you.